Hi guys, Ember here. Welcome to episode 2 of my Minecraft Bedrock Let's Play series. So we've been a little busy since our last episode. I told you I was not overly happy with our starter house, so we started working on our actual house. So we haven't done any of the inside decorating yet. Um, and this is just the first part of the house, but let me show you inside. So we just moved our stuff over. And come up here, and as, as I said, we have to do all the decorating. And we have the patio that goes all the way around the house. So that's about it for that. I also started uh, digging the pit for the slime farm. In fact, I finished digging the pit for the sewing farm. So that's done, and that's about it. So I told you at the end of the last episode that I wasn't sure what we were going to be doing for the second episode, other than building the fish farm. And it occurred to me that you guys might want to help me out with something. You see, when I left my last world, I left my dog behind. His name was Kip. I told him I would find him in this world. I haven't gotten a chance to do that, so I think we're going to start the episode by going to find my dog. <laughs> Not that dog. So let's get uh, ready and get going. Yeah, this looks like a good place to get up. Alright, we're in the desert. We don't want to be in the desert. I really do just have to come up through the mountain here. Alright, grass is the right color. Let's see if we can find the dog. Kip! Kip, where are you? Kip! Come on, buddy. Kip? Oh, I hope he's not mad at me for leaving him behind. I told him I would find him here. I'm looking for my dog. Have you seen a dog about yo high? A little bit smaller than you, a lot cuter. No? Alright. Kip! going to be able to find him in this biome. I don't give up quite yet. Go a little bit further north here. Maybe. I'm just going to go up that mountain. I guess we can. Probably not well, but we can. Well, good news, guys. We found Kip. Unfortunately, when we got back, a creeper blew up our wheat field. But as it turns out, it was fine. We needed to get that semi-automated anyway. I just moved it over here. and set it up to auto-harvest when I press the button. So 
So if you haven't seen this before and you want to know how to do that, just let me know and I can show you another in another episode. So when we found Kip, we also found a friend for him. We'll just leave that there for now. Come on, Kip. And we have some extras. So I figure if we can die and come back, then why wouldn't the same be true for Kip? So Kip won't be going anywhere. So now let's get on to making that fish farm that we talked about. So once you find an ocean, well, let me show you what you need. That is everything you need fairly simple materials list. I will put the material list down in the description as well for you. So what we're going to do first is tunnel up and out. The reason that we're going to do that is to alleviate any of the spawning down here so that we're not fighting that cap. So we're going to go up by one stack. Then once we do that, we're going to go out by one stack. Now the reason we're going out is to put us, get us away from the land and put us over the ocean. So again, that we are maximizing our potential for the fish. The reason I'm using a stack is because I'm lazy and then I don't have to count. I figured this farm out because I was building uh, mob farms. And if you've watched a lot of the videos, they usually tell you to put mob farms over the ocean. And mob farms happen to be broken right now, or at least they were when I was, well they still are, but they were broken when I was trying to build them. And it was getting really frustrating. I was on maybe my fifth one, uh, and I noticed that I might not be getting any mobs, but boy was I getting the fish and the bones. So it makes a, a great bone meal farm for early game. And fairly easy one to make. So once you come out your full stack, you're going to use this last block as your starting area for a 9x9 nine nine platform. That's what we're going to start with. So just come out to either side by 4. starting point and then just go ahead and fill this in. I had Kip stay behind and future Kip came with, but that's okay. Hopefully he doesn't get hurt up here. Okay, so once you have your 9x9 nine nine platform, come over to the side, go to any side you want, and you're going to want to do a 6x3 platform right off of the end of this. 
Now this is optional. The reason I do this is I like putting a portal up here so that I never have to load that ocean when I'm coming over here to use the fish farm. I can just use the portal to come up here. up so that when we put our portal in we don't have the problem of walking out the wrong side of it. Okay. So next we're going to be building the platform for our collection system. So come to the middle of your 9 by 9 and in that middle 3x3 three three area, build it up by 1. Come around to the front with your tunnel area being the front and knock out that first block. We're going to put down our chest in front of that. Make it a double chest. And then come up here and put a hopper feeding into that chest. All right. So next we're going to set up our minecart collection system here. So we are going to down a redstone torch here and put a block on top of that. Okay. Come around to this end, put another redstone torch, and then another block on top of that. So what that does is it gives us the powered block to power our rails. All right. So next, we're going to put our rails down. And there you go. So you have your rail collection system. So all we have to do now is put down our hopper minecart. Okay. So next we're going to build up our drop chamber and our killing mechanism. So I had said two magma blocks, it's actually nine, which is the correct one down in the description. So you're going to set your magma blocks directly on top, so go up there, and that's just going to cover your three by three area here. Once you have that set up, you're going to come out to the corner, off of the corner of your initial platform, and you're going to put in the corner six solid blocks going up. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you're going to do that off of each corner. put these up here temporarily to get up to where I need to be. So next you're going to fill in the bottom two of those spaces with glass. So we'll put glass there, 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 and there. You're going to do 
that all the way around. And then this top, you're going to fill in with stone. All right. So now we are up to the platform level where we're going to be setting up our platform for the fish. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the corner and you're going to come out seven. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then put one extra with a block on top for our bridge. So you'll notice that to the middle you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then that eighth one goes up. So we're going to do that on each side. Okay, so once you have that done, you're going to go ahead and fill this in. I'm going to time lapse me filling this in. Okay, so once you're done building your platform, you just want to double check your count before we put the water in. So if you go from diagonally from your opening to your corner, you should have seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if you just check the opposite corner, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then you know you're fine. So in your corners, you're going to put an extra block and then three 
up on the edge. You're going to do that in each corner. middle and we're going to put in our stone buttons. You're going to put three along the side, one in the middle. Doesn't matter which side you do this on. Three and then your last button goes there. And that will stop your water from flowing down into the actual kill chamber. But it's going to bring it over the edge far enough for the fish to come over. All right, so now we are ready to put our water in. So to put our water in, um, what I do is I don't want to mess with using an infinite water source within my platform here. So I just build a temporary one off of the edge. And I like using the two by two. Just for preference, it doesn't really matter what you use. But it's definitely easy to just use an infinite water source up here rather than trying to bring up all of the buckets of water. Okay. So once you do that, Grab your two buckets of water. Come up here. You're going to put one bucket in opposite corners. So there and there. See that makes it all source water. So as long as you're um, you can pull water from any spot now that you want. As long as you don't go too fast, it's not going to mess up your source. Just making sure. All right, so I am going to do another time lapse now for filling in the water. When you fill in your water, you're going to put one on each block, but you're going to skip this block here this and this. So basically your corner piece you're going to skip and then the uh, spot next to it. Okay, so once you're done putting all the water in along the edges, you're going to put one water in each corner on top of that block that we placed.
shell. I'm going to just half down onto that. So you can see our fish are already falling down. And quite a few of them. Kind of come in waves as they spawn and then fall into the chamber. But the other really neat thing about this farm, well, first of all, for the fish, you stand close. I'm right here under the platform, and the fish are coming down pretty quickly. So if I stood here, I'm going to get the most fish. But if I back up, it's 482, so if I back up to 24 spots, and I found this out the first time I built this, back up to 24 spots and if I watch you'll see there the squid fell down because squid does adhere to the 24 to 54 spaces spherically away from the player so if I need ink all I have to do is come AFK at this farm and stand in this spot versus standing up closer so let's take a look and see what our rates look like if I come and stand up here, again right under the platform, so the fish are spawning more. They'll still spawn when I'm back away from it um, to get the squid, but they'll spawn more often if I'm closer. So let's go ahead and stay here for about a half hour and see what our rates look like. Okay guys, that's been about 30 minutes, so let's check and see what we have. So in 30 minutes we have a little over a stack of bones and three stacks of fish, three and a half stacks of fish. So again, you can increase these rates. Uh, by the way, I did test the ink as well. It's about a stack and a half that you get in 30 minutes, so three stacks an hour. But you can increase these rates if you want to bring this platform out another level. The reason I don't do that is because it increases the rates by about 50%, but you're using, instead of six stacks of your block of choice for the platform, you're using 19. So just a lot more resources needed for early game, which is why I chose to go with the small one. So that is about it for this build. I hope you enjoyed keeping things simple with me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.